Today, as you see, we are in Salty Will or Salty Will Forest. And we're going to look for Shaddock Bane, Shaddock Vane, or Shaddock Beden, depending on how you want to pronounce it and where it is. It's in this Salty Will Forest. Well, after having done a large detour up the forest, I went up to Dewdale Road, which I didn't want to go on because it was shut. And I've ended up on the Dewdale Road. So now I'm hoping this track will take me down to Sherrick Vane. I've earned me tea tonight, I feel. Do we, Pen? problem with still muggy weather is it's fly sicky. I hate the bloody things. It's just to walk faster I think. Check the right fork, the left fork goes down to Great more and we do it another day. Penny's getting a bit tired, you can tell it tired, Pen. I've done the cardinal sin which I keep telling you folks not to do. I've gone out and told people not told people where I am. However, the phone signal is quite good in here. And 4G. Unless of course I've been contaminated by 4G and become delirious and lost my sense of direction. Again, it's a pretty good track down to it. I must admit it's a bit easier going down and uphill. Going down is hard on the knees. So I think. This is my third attempt to find this place. As I know what it's like when I get there. It's not that exciting. I'm afraid, folks. It's one of the few places where the story is probably better than the actual discovery. But it's on my list to do, and I'm going to do it. And by the time I've got this edited, you will have had a brief look at Crunk Do. A lot of people like me grumpy video. A lot of people felt the same way apparently. And we keep telling me it'll be another lockdown in the winter time. I don't know whether folks will cope with that or not. I really don't. There's some horrific posts on the internet about this. And that, and it depends which point of view you take. Every extreme 
theory of conspiracy you've got. You'll always find something on the web to confirm it. That's for sure. Doesn't matter how weird it is, you'll find someone else shares your point of view. Doesn't mean it's right though, it does not mean it's right. See, we're heading towards Snaefell. Yeah, I'll see if I can see it. Possibly it's the right direction. If not, I don't know what is. Most of all, the photographs of man kept the black and white ones. Black and white ones came from the Eye Museum, and I've already said that. And it does show this place before the trees were planted. And you know, when you walk up here today, there's nobody else about it. It's believe that there would have been a lot of people, four or five hundred up here at one time. I mean, I know 20 ruins up and around here. And, um, a lot of those will have disappeared since I've been up here. So goodness knows how many are were here and disappeared. Because originally they would have been built from sods and soil, not stones, so they would never last. famous poem by T. Brown called Kitty off the Sherrick Vane. And it was a real person, apparently her name was Kitty Tear, and she had a brother called Saul Tear. And they came from Bride. So um, I found a excerpt on the web, recorded at Moorhouse Farm, I think. So when I get that steep bit and I can't talk, this walk and talk is a bit of an issue for me. Then I'll add their voice in so you get an idea what the place is about. Memory plays a strange tricks on you, doesn't it? I've walked this place several times over the years and I thought today I'd walk straight to it. But I haven't. I walked past it, round it, under it, and I actually got to it. You can't smell the heather, but I can smell it. I can tell it's divine. The sheer the picture of it, really. The bees having a field day. The sheriff fane is up Silby Glen. High up, my men. High up. You'll not see a sight of it from the road at all by raising up the height of it. Terrible high. And a little skewed of a waterfall. Slip slopping from the root of an owl kern. You know the turn at the bridge and the chapel? Well, in on the gate behind there, that's the road, like straight for Druda Waffle. And just you pass in the school, and up you go. A track, a track, you know, at the side of the brew. Crisscrossing till you come out on the top like a landing, and the house standing two fields back. And all that steep, you can't see the river, not the smallest peep, nor the gill, nor nothing, but looking right over at Snaefell by Jove, or Barul, or Slucor. Did you'll have to be careful with cows in the lek, and no road for a cart up beyond the place, but coming in from another art, about nor-west. The Laughway, yes. That's the road they were doing the hauling. Tia the people was going a calling. Nicholas Tia, that's Nicky Nick Nick, and his wife a gick of the Bala Gick down on Curtain Bride. <laughs> you know them what? And a son and a daughter, that's the lot. Saul the son, 
a name he got from his grandfather on the mother's side. Rather big people down in Kirkbride. <laughs> but the daughter was Kitty. So, easy then. That's Kitty of the Sherrick Bain. Kitty, Kitty, shoes. <laughs> Kitty, Kitty, how old you love? <laughs> nice looking, eh? Aye, that's your way. But I tell you, the first time ever I seen her, she wasn't much more than a baby. Six years maybe would have been her age. And the little clogs at her, clitter clatter, and her little hand in mine to show me the way, you, you understand, down yonder brew. And me a stranger too that was lost on the mountain. And the little soul in the house all alone. And for her to be going best part of a mile, bless the child, till she got me right. I'm not a bit shy, not her, but talking away as pretty as a woman of 30. And that's the way down to the school, says she. And Saul and me is going there every day. You lazy find the way. And turns and off like a bird on the wing. Oh, a bright little thing. Oh, the way the light comes through the trees. Look at the lichen on that tree there. Eh? Definitely not seen much like that one. I can see some buildings in there. So we found it. And as I said to you, it's not the most exciting of buildings. But the story is good. do to be allergic to midges today. They're everywhere. So here we are folks. This is the famous Sherrick Vein. That's where we've walked miles and miles for the day to find. It is as I remember. It is as I remember. Now we're here, we'll have a look at the buildings individually, see if we can recognise what's what. And decide whether they've been thatched or not, see if we can find the spring. Well that's definitely the house. The fireplace or the chelig, as it's called. Last time I see it's overgrown. Yes, definitely um, a substantial fireplace. So you need it up here, wouldn't you? Let's face it, not much protection without these trees. Kayla's left his mark or her mark, and that would mean something to somebody. Imagine the old fire in there steaming away, a pot on it. On the other end, there's another fireplace. It's a bit like the one at Craig Moore. It's a room within a room. But strange really. It's different stones and built different to the outside. I don't know how they've been added later, maybe it's for the same thing as the others were, a dynamite store. Another big fireplace. Another viewpoint. There's several buildings on the place. I think the one in front is the main house though. Trying to work out if it's been thatched in it. 
definitely has because those are the protruding stones they've already used to wrap the uh, bagain or sagain or the rope around. So this one's definitely been thatched, this one. Again, you can have a look at, see what they've done, they've built into the bank. Save the uh, effort of digging out too much and giving them extra shelter. The house, they wouldn't do this because it would get damp. This one's been rendered inside. Storage area, never was a house. Rendered anyway. No fireplaces though, no fireplaces. So the third little one to go and come to. This one does have some house-like looks about. Hmm. Look at a little uh, window there on the world, eh? Look how many people came through this doorway, sat down. So small, so small. Birds, you're going to use a chuff. I get a chuff. I'll have somebody to put me right. See the pattern on these walls here on the outside. This one's facing north. So I never see the sun. Oh really, so it keeps its uh, colour, I suppose, better. So in we go, eh? Warm welcome, I'm sure. Spirits are always about. Now then, we're going to try and find a spring of water of some sort. Going back to nature, hasn't she? And there's your spring of water. I'm not sure whether I'd be tempted to drink it all the same. It looks pretty foul to me. So when you come up to visit these little places, talk to the, the little ones. I always tell you what's the best thing to look at, to look out for. You're never on your own in these places, never. Never scared. Well, I think it was worth the effort. Definitely am, um, as I remembered it. I'm going to sit down somewhere and get a bit of history of the place. Scribble on some bits of paper and have a chat about it. Well, as I said, I was going to give you some information. I was going to just remember it, but I can't remember it, so you'd have to bear with me as I read a bit about it. So, as I said to start with, it was established in 1643 by Ewan Cowley as an intact land, and it was farmed for many generations by the Neen family. 50 acres, and it was made famous, as I said, with a poem by T. Brown. In 1972, Mr. Quayle wanted a manservant or a steward following a pair of horses. And uh, you had to apply to James Neal. I assume he must have been farming here at that time. In 1877, Maud Neal was born. I don't know whether it be, maybe it was a sister. 1899, it was advertised for sale by Mr. Neen from Leeds. And the tenant at that time was Mr. Crane. The farm was eventually sold by Crystals for £300 to Mr. Stevenson and Ramsey. Came for sale again in 1918, in which time they'd only made £175 instead of a £300 reserve. 1918, Mr. John Quayle Jr. was summoned to uh, join the war, and his father put up a case for him not to go to the war, but it was um, dismissed, even though his father was struggling to farm. 
I came here find came again for sale in 1920 with a, a dozen other properties and come to about a thousand acres in total sold by Lamoth of Ramsey and in 1931 it was let again Mr Quayle was a tenant and again in 1934 but in 1936 the um, Letting was arranged by the forestry board, so from that time onwards there would have been the trees planted, I guess. I'm not sure when they would have been planted. And um, the history of it is made famous by T. Brown's poem, I suppose. Because as I said in the poem, Kitty was a tear from Bride and Ramsey and her brother was Saul. He was from the same place. And when the poem was written in 1895, she was a proposed to be a... Uh, a child, so six or seven, eight years old. Anyway, don't go the way I did because it'll take you hours. But if you come down from the Drudar Road, go along from uh, Brandywell, first track you come to, and turn left after Drudar and park up, you'll find the map, draw it straight down the track, don't deviate, and you'll come to it. I have to say, although I did go the long way around, I did enjoy the track, so it's almost never a complete waste of time. Anyway, it's time for Tenny's. Time for Penny's tea now and mine. Well, that was a, an interesting afternoon, I feel. Uh, we'll video this track down here so that when you come up, you'll know which way to go. One of my idiot features here. I'm wandering down to the Selby River again. So we're going down through the trees back to the car. Let's see which this track. So you may have to watch this video through to the end to know how you get to this place if you want to go to it. As I've said many times, I think the history is probably more interesting than the building. But even so, it's a pleasant walk. Not too demanding. Good hard tracks. I said this road I came down from the Drudel Road to walk towards because it's unfortunately shut. Be open in September they tell me. Take the right hand fork. Looks quite well worn. And next time they want to come up here, I'll remember it. Come on, Penny. Light, all oh, the nights are pulling in, not dramatically, I think it gets dark now about half eight. But when it's cloudy, obviously, it's darker quicker, isn't it? I do like these forests though in this autumn time because the colours are just stunning. As are the glens, so we've got a few more to do. Oops. When we get into the year. Did I finish any YouTube? I think I did, didn't I?
Well, they say the mountain bike boys use this track. So most of these places are they're banned from using your motorbike. As I was saying before, ages ago now, this little path would be the one they walked from Shedrick Vane to the chapel twice a day on Sunday, maybe to the pub. In school, the kids would have walked too. And they wouldn't have minded because their friends would be going the same way. Do the walking yourself. I've done it for you. doing the video and you're concentrating on doing the video. You're not aware of what's going on around you. You never thought, oh I never thought there'd be so many shades of green. That song. Oh, can I hit in the 60s? 40 shades of green. Old Irish song, I country song, I don't know. And there sung it. Spirits. Always a bit of a challenge, but they're always worth it when we get there. Like a new civilization. Cars, anyway, somewhere. A change looking down at something else rather than the path. What's, what's Penny looking at, eh? What is she looking at? All right. A marker stone been put there for a reason. Whiteness, you could find it at night on your way home to know you're on the right path. I reckon that path there will take us up through the Craig Moor eventually. It may have been just there from accident, but it looks to me like it was put there. All downhill now, Penny. What do you think to that? Come on, it's good. So it feels like we're coming to the end of the path, Penny. We'll make a note next time so then we go up there. Easy to find. Got some folks picking mushrooms. Looks all right to me. I just don't know what you'd eat and what you wouldn't.
I am curious to know where this joins the path, or the main path. So you don't watch all of this lot. Fast forward the bit you want to watch. Just to show you the way, I guess. Even though I knew the maps, and I looked at the maps and studied the maps, and I know the place, I still didn't find that easy to find. Much easier to find coming from that way. down to civilization. Uh, nothing fussy with civilization. Now we see where we are wrong. So there you are, folks. Coming to find this place you need to find a gate beside the old schoolhouse. And that will be taking you straight up to Sherrick Bean. Pretty steep though. My right about way was easier, but longer. And no wonder those folks are puff puffing when they get up there. So, great afternoon. We achieved something which is important to me. I'm going to spend the next week editing it, make it sound half interesting. It's the sort of one you would do two cars, I think. Park one car down in Salty Wilp car park here. Pull off the Druda Road and then you can walk down. Pretty slippery, especially if it was wet. So, oh, we left at home at one o'clock. I don't know what time it is now, but I guess it's probably half five. Don't, need you. don't know whether you need to see anymore. Probably find your own way now. It's pretty steep though, really steep. As I said, imagine walking that every day, sometimes twice a day get everything that you wanted and needed. And those trees there are two runes called the Corridy and the Craggans. Do those sometime, although they're in private ownership I feel. <laughs> 